director for the Adams Group of Companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, what does it deal with? Uh, we're mostly in uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in uh, ICT mm -hmm. and we do business training. Okay. Yes. All right. So we are interested in the business training aspect today. And we have Ruth here. Ruth, who's in the business world. Uh, so Ruth, introduce yourself. Perhaps tell us what you do, where you were located. And then we now get to the discussion. My name is Ruth Mbogwa. I am a professional makeup artist mm -hmm. and the founder of Bold Face Artistry. Mm -hmm. It's a company that deals in uh, makeup artistry, applying makeup for women and also training. I'm also a consultant in the area of beauty, mm -hmm. uh, specifically makeup. And I also run another company called Arts on Events and Entertainment. But today we're talking about beauty. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Tuva will tell you the confidence in what it is that you do is very, very important. If at all your business is to thrive, if at all you're going to go out there and sell your product or service to the people, just setting up a business yeah. from the word go. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, I, I'm from the technology world. So mm. for me, setting up a business means a domain name, right? Right. We're in that business, <laughs> uh, we're the guys who own by Domain Kenya. So for me, that's basically the first step. So once you have an idea of what you want to do, so you as a business person, me, you, mu you must have some bit of history in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you cannot get uh, you cannot get into real estate, you cannot get into IT if you don't have a degree in the section or at least an internship or worked in that particular area. So for me, having an idea of what you're doing is very very important, mm -hmm. right? And I encourage people who get into business, first of all, get an internship, right? Learn the basics of you know wearing a suit. Uh, wearing a tie, you know, whether I choose, going for meetings, tagging along for the, for the meetings. It's very important. There's no else you're going to learn to, to send an email unless you work in, a, in, in the corporate environment. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. So after that, you, you get a, your, your niche, uh, you know, your niche environment and you build your business from there. Right. All right. And yeah. you know, uh, I, I left something hanging while I was making this introduction, yeah. for, uh, specifically of uh, Ruth, uh, we're having a chit chat on how she had set up some business at some point in time. Yeah. And you know, within a blink, it is nowhere yeah. again for, for, for some reason that perhaps she's going to share. Yeah. And uh, you know, the damage that comes along with that. And equally, I think we mentioned something to do with uh, you know, the makeup world, yeah. uh, where you know, like you rightfully put it, Tuva, it's important for someone to have basic idea you know on the line that they're getting themselves into but today left right and center someone wakes up they can do their makeup good and then they advance it and the next time they're a makeup artist the next time they're setting up a, a business uh, you know that in line with makeup just how dangerous or just how good is that yeah. especially when it's uh, about understanding your business and getting the right product and service to the market that is in need yeah mm. it's it's important the way he was saying to just first understand the business because mm. i remember when i was starting uh, i've been in the industry for more than 10 years i'm celebrating 10 years mm. and um thank you mm. and i remember i used to read a lot of business books i used to engage myself in you know workshops and learn so much about how to run a business and then mm. by the time i started i knew how to you know uh, make contracts i knew how to you know form receipts, I knew how to brand myself, so I entered and within the first year, people were like, where have you been all this time? Mm -hmm. But you see, my foundation was very strong. I, I was taking so much time in learning how to actually run this thing because you cannot just enter plainly without thinking that it's just application of, you know, your eyebrows and foundation. Mm -hmm. And that's where many um, upcoming makeup artists go wrong. They think just because YouTube is there and we thank YouTube and everyone who, you know, uh, creates content, they help us in one way or another. But you can't say that that's your foundation, honestly. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that you have not learned when you go to YouTube and you think, now I know how to do a perfect eyebrow. Mm -hmm. Now I know how to match foundation shades. But you haven't learned how to run that business. And then when you enter and then you hit with a storm and then the first year you're out, mm. or maybe the second, and then you're thinking, Maybe this wasn't the right idea. Maybe I need to get to something else. And then you quickly jump into something else without even getting an advisor like Tuva. Mm. And then you jump out of it again. And then it becomes a cycle that is never ending. Mm -hmm. mm. We're going to come back to you for that story of setting up a business. And you know, in the morning you have a business and you think now this is it. The next minute in the evening you don't have this business yeah. at all. Yeah. And you just do not understand where do you begin. Do you continue with the same thing or a different one? But here we are. 
are, Tuva, you speak of what it is that you do and uh, your entity, and I realize there is a lot of stuff going on underneath. And same applies to Ruth here. And I think it's a common trend today that, uh, you know, one will be in the business of consultancy, whichever, whichever angle or sector, and then you get yourself into a different business as well, a different one and everything. What are the dangers of that? Or just how safe can you maneuver in such a space where you're doing lots of things, you know, under one umbrella without failing or without, you know, having one lagging behind? Yeah. Mm. So, for example, the Adams Group companies, we have been, we've been in business for almost 13 years now. Mm. We realized almost half, or actually more than half of that, we were concentrating on ICT only. Only. Right? So our foundation is ICT. Mm -hmm. The money we got in ICT is what we pumped into real estate. Right? And then when things got a bit comfortable is when I was okay, fine. We've doing this, we've done this, we've seen how businesses fail, mm -hmm. right? I've been there as a sole proprietor. I know how it feels not to be able to pay rent. I know how it feels for the pressure of payroll, right? So why don't we uh, somehow give them, a, 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 you know, you steal for them the idea that, okay, fine, you don't have to go through all the troubles I went through. We can train you into getting things done better. Mm -hmm. So I believe that um, the best way to do it is to concentrate on your core business. What is your strength? Okay. Right? So mm -hmm. for us, our strength is technology. We are very good at technology, right? So we built on that for almost, you know, seven, eight years, mm -hmm. right? And based on that, you're like, okay, fine, now I feel we are okay here. We have mechanisms running. We have structures running. It runs on its own, mm -hmm. then now we can diversify. So it's not bad to diversify, but I feel, okay, at least, and, uh, unless you have the kind of money uh, some of the billionaires in, in, in America have, mm -hmm. I feel it takes a bit of time to set up your core business, right? Then the rest builds on it. So yeah. the foundation is very, very important, mm -hmm. yes. All right, and, and, and equally under her, there's a lot going on, but the beauty of what it is that uh, is uh, in her line, I realize, is that she probably is doing a couple of things that are almost in the same line, I'd want to say. So she's talking about beauty, modeling, arena dancing, and all, almost uh, the same or a similar industry or sort, yeah? yeah? Contrary to what it is that uh, Adams would do on the other yeah. end. So how easy is it in such a space to maneuver, to balance, to make sure that everything else gets the attention that it needs, or at least create a balance where, like he rightfully puts it, you know, yeah. uh, focus on what is your strength and, you know, just keep the others going. Yeah. Mm. Like what you said, I have, I call myself a three-in-one mm. uh, artist. I mean, the performing artist, I, I, I act, I dance professionally, mm. I model, you'll see me in commercial model, uh, modeling, yeah. uh, and then now I have the makeup business. So for me, my core is makeup. You know, I have really worked so hard for this. Yeah. I have, you know, put in so much time, so much effort, so much more training. I keep on learning, learning and learning basically about the business and even how to just, you know, improve and grow it. Because again, you have to also ask yourself, how far do I want to go? What, what is the why? You know, the why keeps you going because again, you'll find challenges along the way. Mm -hmm. So the why keeps you going. You have to get your why. You have to look at what is my five year, you know, plan, my tenure. Where do I want to reach? So for me, my, the makeup is, is my, my strong point and that's where I also have the makeup school, where I have now uh, people I'm training, mm. uh, people I'm helping to get in the industry and understand, guys, it's not just about what you see on the face. It's more than that. It's, it's your image goes in line. It's understanding even how to just talk to a client. Mm. It's understanding how to, you know, talk to a, you know, a, that, that customer who comes to you and maybe Ali, I'm on the wrong side of the bed, you know, mm. and you have to. And apply. the customer is always right. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you have to smile. And yeah. this person is just giving you negative energy. And you have to know how to balance because at, at the end of the day, it's your reputation at hand. Mm -hmm. And as what I was saying earlier, where are you seeing your business go? Or maybe did you get into it because you wanted to get some moolah? For that one year or maybe you're a university student and you just wanted for your long holidays to not be idle to make some money so for that person won't have a strong foundation you're trying to after you know quick money yeah but for someone who is looking at this for you know in the long term there are things that you have to apply there are people you have to talk to you have to get coaches on the way mm. to help you at least bring uh, build that you know strong foundation mm -hmm. all right i think we should have started by talking about startups setting yeah. up the business you know the onset 
from the word go before we come to the fact that you know in this space that is saturated how do you just find your balance therein so let's talk about setting up a business the aspect of finances the aspect of you know knowledge the aspect of you know crafting a team the aspect of just making to know what would be the right location for my space in as much as today we are all going digital yeah yeah so um from what i've learned over the years i feel that um when you're starting a business, you have mm -hmm. your passion, or whatever, you need to start very, very slow. Most people want to get an office in Westlands, you know, uh, have yeah. a fancy swinging chair and all that. But reality is you can start your business online, right? Once you have the, uh, the proof of concept that this is working, people are ordering, people are sending me money, there's constant income coming in, then I say, fine, I need an extra one hand to help me out, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. An extra pair of hands, I need two pairs, you know, you can build it gradually. By the time you're getting a fancy office in Westlands, you have tested it, money's coming to the bank accounts, right? You're just not uh, spending, you know, you've retired, you spent all your money on setting up a business, which is not bringing any income. So I advise startups, whether someone is doing this, after the retirement or, you know, the, 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 the life is, or startup, uh, you know, the life started with entrepreneurship, you must be able to start slowly, mm -hmm. right? So online presence is usually the best, the best bet. But, but, but there are instances where we have businesses that really their niche is not there, it's yeah. not online. So in such a case, how do you create that balance? As then well? you start small, mm -hmm. you start small, yeah, yeah. you start small. Yeah. You don't need to get it. For example, if you're selling coffee, mm -hmm. you don't have to sell coffee at, you don't need to get a, a building in, in, in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. You can start up as, in a small section, right? Does it this work and gradually grow? Mm -hmm. So what you're avoiding is is uh, overhead you cannot maintain, mm. right? And, and small in this case is relative. Is is rel relative to yeah. correct, yeah. correct, mm. correct. Yeah. So you want to start very. Uh, in other words, you need to be very humble about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, because you you you'll, you'll rather grow slowly, and you know money is actually coming in, and the bank is it's actually reflecting that you're, you're able to do you're able to do your business correctly. So to me, starting slowly is 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 what I advise people. Uh, from a very young age, try to automate it. If you can't automate it. Uh, try to find a very easy way, whether you're there or not, the business to be running, yeah? So you shouldn't be the only person who understands the business. So try as much as possible, say, okay, fine, I'll be out of this uh, face of, I'll be not the face of the business mm -hmm. anymore in five years, in 10 years. Am I training people enough to be able to pick it up, whether I'm there or I'm somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere else? Mm -hmm. That's very important. So even understanding the business, you need to understand, are they able to manage this on their own even when I'm not there. So those are some of the key things you need to understand. Mm -hmm. You need to have a very good relationship with banks, right? The mm -hmm. financial institutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Financial institutions, this include banks, this include circles, mm -hmm. right? And our very, and, and realize very young people sometimes really mess them, themselves up at a very young age. Whereas someone at 21, 22, 23 already has debts in CRB and whatever. So it's not bad. I was talking to a, a, a banker the other day and they're telling me, Adams, you know, the whole country is on CRB, mm. right? So it's there. So how do you correct it? So that when, let's say two years, three years down the line, you're okay. You're able to tell the bank, okay, fine, these are my transactions, right? So based on this, can I get a loan, right? And not a loan for a car, right? A loan to expand your business, mm. right? So that's the kind of thinking you need to, to have that, okay, fine, I'm building a business. I want all the money to go to the bank. So most people realize when they're collecting money, most businesses, they'll say, I want the money in cash, send the money to me on M-Pesa, mm. right? This is not a financial institution. Mm. At the start of every business, you need to understand that, assume all the money is dirty. Don't touch people's money. Tell them, you want to give me money, this money is dirty, let the bank clean it up, mm -hmm. right? So all your transactions, and these days, the banks are very good. You can do a pay bill number, an account number, the money goes directly to your account. Mm -hmm. So before you touch any shilling, or two shillings or three shillings, make sure that the bank has seen it, the bank has cleaned it up, and then you can withdraw from there. Mm. So the basics, uh, the basic, the basic, uh, levels are, or lev basic skills are about running a business mm -hmm. which people don't know. They'll rather have the money on M-Pesa than on a bank. Yeah. The bank keeps track of every single transaction you're doing. It can actually help you, right? So the people who will be analyzing your loan, they're not stupid, they're human beings. They're people who to go to bed, brush their teeth and wake up. Yeah. So they're able to see that, okay, these are the transactions this, this company is doing. So based on this, Right. You build, you build your yes. Credit. Yes. So you can have a very good transaction, but imagine you you're, you're still listed on the CRB. Mm. So some, some of these things are, are inevitable. You know, uh, as young people, or whatever it happens. So how do you get yourself out of it? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you go talk to the bank and tell, okay, fine, listen, boss. Yeah, this is my financial situation right now. How do you go about it? 
right? Can we get out of this in the next one year? Okay. Can we get out of this in the next two years? So that kind of patience needs a bit of, you know, you need to be very, very, very laid back. Yeah. So if you're able to talk to the bank and say, okay, fine, this is the kind of money you enlisted me for. Uh, maybe it's a credit card, you got excited when you've got your first job or something like that. How do we get it cleared? So it's a very slow process, but you can have a very good relationship with your bank. And those are the guys who are supposed to build you as a business. Mm -hmm. Yes, All or right. a circle, yeah. Okay, sometimes, yeah. you know, uh, stories are very, very important. And you know, you come, you see this successful person. Uh, most of the people will tell you, we started our business, you know, motivated by so-and-so's story so perhaps just a reminder of where it all began and and, and to all this beauty that we see today yeah mm. what we say just reminded me why i started you remember uchumi mm -hmm. uh uchumi paper bag yeah. the medium-sized right. one was my makeup kit wow yes mm -hmm. back so you've put your stuff in there, there yeah yes back in 2012 right. and um i remember starting small I remember I had 30,000 in my account. Mm -hmm. I had gotten from a gig we had performed in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So that was what was left in my account after in, I went back to school and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the 30,000, I wiped it out and I felt, you know what, I'm doing this. And I bought products and I didn't have a makeup kit. What you see here came after some time. Okay. I didn't have all these foundations you see here. I have different brands. I have shades. different brands of, of uh, shades. I have different brands. I have different brands of lipsticks. I have grown over time. But that time I started with what I had. Mm -hmm. And for, for, for true, 30,000 is not much if you're thinking. I want to compare myself with someone who's been there for 5, 10, 15 years. Mm. You think of what do I have now? But I need to grow. Okay, so I remember my first client, I had so many people to work on, I had like 12 people, it was a wedding. And this lady paid me 10,000 shillings. I felt so happy. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was like a million to me because uh, I felt like I've invested in something and I've gotten you know, a return. Mm -hmm. And I followed the steps of business that I knew that time. And I, I remember I gave her a seven page contract. Baka, she was like, you're so serious. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're a makeup artist. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And I didn't lie to her. I told her, I've never done a wedding before. You're the first person. Mm -hmm. She saw me, you know, uh, remove all the papers from my foundations. Yeah. And then I gave my heart to that and I got paid for that. But what did I do after that with the 10,000? Mm -hmm. I, you know, fed back my business. I went and bought more foundations. I went and bought more lipsticks. I fed back the business. And then I took the opportunity of, I was young. I was um, in my 20s, early 20s. Mm -hmm. And I remember, because I was telling myself, no, I'm living with my parents. I don't have responsibilities. So this is the best thing I can do for myself. Now, this is the best time to grow. I don't have to buy foods. Do you think about rent? So every job I was doing, I used to feed back my business. And within three years, I was like someone who has been there for five, six years. Because nice. I was, you know, serious on the, on the, on the growth. I was serious on learning. Um, and it brought me all this. Mm -hmm. And there are like two other kids at home. Yeah, yeah that I've not brought. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Ah, okay. And you know, uh, this is interesting. Uh, because Tuva, it's one thing to start. It is one thing to say that I've put all the money that I have onto this. It's another to grow yeah. to the next level, to the next and the next. And now we're talking about 13 since inception, 10 since inception. What is the secret in growing your business day by day amidst the challenges? Yeah, so you, you, you must know that you're going to face the challenges. They're, they're going to come. You can't, you can't dodge them. You can't hide, hide under the table. You must face them. So depending on how you deal with that, and I'll give you a practical example. And I've told this to people sometimes that uh, sometimes I, may refer, I, I like talking about young people mm -hmm. because maybe that's where most of us are. And young people, we learn, honesty is a big part of business, mm -hmm. right? Honesty and uh, transparency. You need to be able to tell a client, okay, this will take us two weeks, this will take us a month, this will take us two months, mm -hmm. right? And that foundation of uh, transparency as a business but will, will bid you one day. Because at a time when you don't have the currency, People, your word will be your mm -hmm. currency. You'll be able to tell them, okay, fine, I don't have this, but based on my performance, based on what I do, you should be able to see ABCD results in all, and that will help you one day. Mm. And it starts at a very, uh, when, when, when you're seated, when, when you're in a bed sitter, and your landlord comes and knocks and tells you, okay, fine, you haven't paid rent for, for this month. What do you do, right? You're able to tell them, okay, fine, right now, because most people tell them, I'll pay tomorrow, mm. right? Most people, 
or I'll pay next week fasting on, on, on Monday. So you should have told them, okay, fine, right now, I don't have anything. Because you realize someone has a building, how many stories long, that don't depend on your 7,500. Trust me, they don't. Mm -hmm. But you're able to tell them, okay, fine, I'll not be able to do this for three weeks. So those long-term, whatever, same thing, you need to, 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 to rely on uh, your word, right? So for us, the quality is also very important, right? We don't take, I'd rather say no to your project, mm. right? But when I pick, when we pick your project, right, we make sure we give you the very best, yeah. right? Mm. So if I know I'll undercut A, B, C, D, I'll not take the project at all, mm. right? So that kind of honesty and transparency to your clients really helps because they're the people who will see your work, will see your quality and refer you to the next person. Well put. Yeah. All right, allow us to take a quick short break and then we come back, understand some more on some of the challenges that you have faced, but most importantly, the meets, you know, the information that is saturated all over and the fact that, you know, uh, the market, yes, is saturated, but even still, you soldier on. So yeah. after the short break. Are you looking for a college that will impact your practical